welcome to each and every one of you as we gather on this very beautiful last Sunday in August. Wonderful summer, summer Sunday. We have had wonderful weather this summertime, and uh, our announcements are found in our worship, uh, worship folder, and uh, uh, the mission project concludes for this, the two months of July and August, which is our Washington County Food Pantry, which is at the Irvington UCC Church. And if you wish to give to that way, you should mark your checks accordingly or also indicate. But this is our last Sunday of that special mission project for which the church matches up to $250. Um, and I don't have any other announcements for us today to remind ourselves of continuing to support the church or offerings and the offering baskets and plates are at the exit or entrance to the church. Are there any other announcements for us today? Uh, Shirley. I'm sorry, what did you say? I... We uh, had served 42 to 43 individuals. Oh, and, oh my, 43 units, wonderful. Yeah, it's, so it's very, very wonderful ministry, and we want to continue our generous support of that ministry. Thank you, Shirley. Thank you all for going also. So in, we will remain seated throughout our service today, except for our closing blessing for the benediction. So let us join in singing the first two verses of what wondrous love is this, number 257. pray. O oh God, we thank you for your Son, who chose the path of suffering for the sake of the world. Humble us by his example, point us to the path of obedience, and give us strength to follow your commands. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us. 
so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with you through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint because your love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us be in prayer. Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of faithfulness, you bid your people to follow Jesus. Set the mind of your church on divine things. Grant us trust in you that we lose our lives for the sake of Christ and thereby discover joy in life through him. God of wonder, the earth is yours and all that is in it. Heal your creation and give us eyes to see the world as you do. As the seasons change, pattern the rhythm of our lives in harmony with all creation. God of salvation, you promise to deliver us. Give those who suffer a strong sense of your presence and love. Accompany those who are uncertain Raise the spirit of those who are despairing and heal the sick. We lift up in prayer those who are hospitalized, those who are living in centers of assisted living and in nursing homes and are homebound. God of community, you call us to rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, and persevere in prayer. May our congregation become a workshop of your love. Reconcile our divisions. God of grace, you give us everlasting life. In love, we recall your holy ones who now live in your undying light. In our remembering, give us a foretaste of the feast to come. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I invite us to join our voices and spirits as one as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Before our scripture lesson, I failed to announce I... I want to check with, with Darlene. We have Sunday school next Sunday beginning on September the 6th. So our Sunday school will resume at 9 o'clock next Sunday. This time we will hear God's holy word as read to us by Shirley and Darlene. Good morning. The first lesson is from Paul's letter to the Romans, Romans 12, verses 9 through 21. Let love be genuine, hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good, love one another with mutual affection, outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal, be ardent in spirit, serve the Lord, rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer, contribute to the needs of the saints, extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep, live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, Feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. 
Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The psalm today is Psalm 105, verses 1 through 6, 23 through 26, and 45C. The refrain is, let those who seek the Lord rejoice. O give thanks to the Lord, call on his name, make known his deeds among the peoples. Let those who seek the Lord rejoice. Sing to him, sing praises to him, tell of all his wonderful works, glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord and his strength, seek his presence continually. Let those who seek the Lord rejoice. Remember the wonderful works he has done, his miracles and the judgments he uttered. O offspring of his servant Abraham, children of Jacob, his chosen ones. Then Israel came to Egypt. Jacob lived as an alien in the land of Ham. And the Lord made his people very fruitful and made them stronger than their foes, whose hearts He then turned to hate his people, to deal craftily with his servants. He sent his servant Moses and Aaron, whom he had chosen. Praise the Lord. Let those who seek the Lord rejoice. A reading from the Holy Gospel of St. Matthew 16, 21 through 28. From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed. And on the third day, he be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord. This must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. For you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any, any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay every one for what has been done. Truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Our gospel lesson is a rather, I should say, striking gospel lesson that is presented to us, the action of Jesus. If we read the introduction in our scripture settings, it is very clear that this is not an easy lesson for us. And it says that Jesus shocks, uses the word shocks, the 12 disciples with revelation that there is a cross in their future. Shocking news. The 12 had no such aspirations. Jesus gives them a stiff dose of reality. I rather appreciate that rather direct information regarding our gospel lesson today. I've entitled our sermon time together, The Cost of Discipleship. The Cost of Discipleship. In our United Church of Christ Statement of Faith, it's the phrase is, we share in the cost and the joy of discipleship. There is cost and there is joy in being a follower of Jesus. But the words are very clear to us today in that text, and it says, if anyone wants, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves, Ooh, deny, and take up their cross and follow me. In other words, don't pack your baggage for a day on the beach in Florida or Southern California. Take up your cross. Take up your cross and follow me. First, as I have noted, this is a difficult teaching of Jesus. The difficult teaching because we tend sometimes to fool ourselves that this Christian life and following Christ is not one of cost, but all of gathering together the goodies of the world. The honesty with which we hold our lives before God is the measure of our desire to be a follower of Jesus. Jesus was being very frank, we would say, and very honest with his disciples. And they did not have aspirations for that. Here we are in the 16th chapter of the Gospel of St. Matthew, and they have turned their face and turned their way going toward Jerusalem. Now they thought, I imagine, we're going to Jerusalem, the great city, we're going to see the temple being rebuilt, the temple that Herod has there for us. We're going to see that. It's an extraordinary building and a magnificent city set on a hill, Zion, the city of God. Here we come. Well, Jesus said, not so fast, followers. For if you want to be my follower, if you want to follow me into Jerusalem, you're going to have to deny yourself and take up your cross and follow me. Second, it's the end of our lives that Jesus is concerned about in this teaching. Now, the end of our lives, not the end of this physical life, not the last moment of our breath or the closing of our eyelids in death, but the la end of life as setting a new goal. The past is behind us, and a new life is in front of us. And that new life is being a follower, a disciple of Jesus the Christ. What's this all about? Well, in the Evangelical Catechism, and at the very beginning of that catechism, and in Luther's small catechism, there's phrases such as this. One of the very first questions, and I remember it from having memorized it decades ago, what is the chief concern of man? Man's chief concern should be seek after the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Our chief purpose in life, our primary purpose, is right there at the beginning of our teachings from a catechism. What is our chief purpose? It is very clear to seek after the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And as I recall, that answer ended, 
and all these things shall be added unto you as well. Our primary purpose is to arrange our lives around Jesus, the way of Jesus, the way of the cross. Jesus had come to this moment when he needed to be as clear as he could be with his disciples about life that was before them. There is a German theologian by the name of Dietrich Bonhoeffer, and if you receive your September newsletter today, I have written of Dietrich Bonhoeffer. We'll say more next Sunday regarding this great German theologian, and he is the one who used the phrase cost of discipleship, and he cautioned that it was not cheap. Bonhoeffer was a Lutheran pastor in Germany during the Second World War. Bonhoeffer was faithful along with many, many other Christians in Germany who were a part of what is called the Confessing Church. The Confessing Church was the church that never joined or became a part of, I should say, separated itself from the official German church recognized by the German government. The Confessing Church had a very difficult time, we might say. As Bonhoeffer, Dietrich Bonhoeffer said, they bore the cost of discipleship. It was not cheap. Bonhoeffer, along with many, many other pastors, Bonhoeffer was hung for his opposition to the government Interestingly enough, in April of 1945, just several months before the ending of the war in Europe, which is marked actually 75 years ago, victory in Europe is observed this coming Wednesday, the 2nd of September. Victory in Japan, BJ Day, was about 10 or so days ago. The war itself came to a total conclusion on this coming Wednesday, 75 years ago. Remember playing as a child, follow the leader? I remember that, it was kind of fun <laughs> to be the follower or to be the leader. The rules are very simple. The leader gets to go wherever she chooses and the followers either follow or quit the game. You have two options, do it or don't do it. Followers don't get to tell the leader where to go. That's her choice alone. The leader leads, and the followers obviously follow. That's the choice. Every follower continually decides how far she will go with whomever is the leader. If you are following, it's always a matter of trust and choice. Christians are playing follow the leader. Only the game is life, and it ends in death and then resurrection. Jesus is saying, follow me, and I will lead you on the way that leads to life eternal. Along the way, there will be cost. We will lose what this world tells us is important in order to discover really who we are. We play this game all our lives, in one way or another, whether we acknowledge it or not. It's a game of trust and choice. And there are times in each and every one of our lives, I imagine in my life and yours, when we are thrown back, as we say, to the very foundation of our faith. It's when we go through something that brings up the very possibility of suffering with disease or suffering with loss of family members, our friends, our neighbors. It throws us back, as we say, from the foundation of our faith. For the followers of Jesus, how far will we follow him when the path leads to places we do not understand? How much do we trust the one we are following? Peter couldn't fathom his leader would go to the cross. 
that cross set before Jesus and each disciple. In the game, follow the leader. The leader realizes if your followers don't trust you, the game ends very quickly. In order to be a leader, <laughs> you have to lead someone. So you've got to have some followers. Very obvious. The same is true for us, only our lives are never over until our baptismal vows and our baptismal sacrament is completed in death and in new life. The real question becomes, who am I following? Do I have faith to follow the one who's, in whose way I am walking? Even though this game is not always fun, it will bring us to the deepest joy of all, discovering God's purpose in life. What should be our purpose in life? To seek after the kingdom of God and his righteousness. If we want to become a follower, we deny ourselves, take up our cross, and follow. Difficult teaching. The way of Christ leads us away from self-preservation to the cross where our lives are given away for the sake of others. Jesus' followers knew that it was going to lead to vulnerability, yet he promised to those who trust him, becoming vulnerable will actually lead to life abundant. Reminded me of his wonderful words in that gospel song, trust and obey, for there's no other way but to trust and obey. We meet the true meaning of the cross when we might want the game to be over. Can I go back to a life where I'm in control? When Jesus is our leader, we follow. We, we give up for the sake of others and of our Lord Jesus Christ. Discovering what God desires and orient our lives in that direction is the way of the cross. Soren Kierkegaard, the Swedish theologian of the last century, said in one of his writings, there are, very wisely, there are more admirers of Jesus than there are followers of Jesus. I'm afraid that's quite true. The choice is whether we will simply admire Jesus, saying all kinds of wonderful things about Jesus, or whether we will take that step by step by step, as the song says, step by step, and be a follower. James Emery White, the pastor of a mega church, the Mecklenburg Community Church in Charlotte, North Carolina. He has spoken out about taking up the cross in the everyday lives of families. He, sp he speaks of the dangers of sports eclipsing family life to this thriving, vital congregation of young families, he says and reminds them, let's say this out loud. Stand in front of a mirror and see if we like it. I will do spiritual things for my child's sake until sports conflict then sports wins. For White and for many parents, that uncomfortable choice is the cross moment. According to James Emery White, cross moments and following Christ means changing our everyday lives. It may seem confusing, it may seem demanding, and it did to the disciples. Peter and the rest were confused. They didn't want to go. They said, oh, Jesus, you're not going to be crucified. You're not going to die. Wow. What did Jesus say to Peter? Get behind me, Satan. He called Peter Satan, the one upon whom he was going to rock, he was going to build his church. It is tough confusing and demanding. The cross is a paradox. We lose by gaining. We die and then live. 
God's love is a discovery for us of joy and abundance. Following Jesus' life is shaping our lives according to the way of the gospel. It is not easy, and it costs. It is offering our cloak to the one who has none. It is walking the second mile when one mile seems enough. It means turning the other cheek when it seems smarter to retaliate. Tough good news here, isn't it? It is tough good news for me. Imagine for you. The very heart of the gospel of Jesus Christ and of our lives is a good leader tells the truth. Jesus tells his disciples to watch out. You can gain the world and lose your soul. A word of caution we need to hear. We can gain all sorts of stuff, power, prestige, and still be empty, looking for what satisfies the soul. For the followers of Jesus, our way leads to cross. Who would ever choose that way? Peter and the disciples couldn't imagine. But Jesus says to follow him. Take up your cross and learn of me. We learn to walk by walking. We learn to talk by talking. We become courageous by being vulnerable. Those first steps in infancy, why they are making us vulnerable. It's not easy to stumble around and try to stand and from a crawling position and to take those first steps and to avoid the hot stoves and to avoid the steps that may take us down. We have placed ourselves as a vulnerable infant to take that first step and then it becomes step by step we walk the way. There will be the cost of discipleship, but as it says, we will share in the cost and in the joy of discipleship. Thanks to each of you for sharing both in the cost and the joy of discipleship. To be not only admirers of Jesus, but we are actually also followers of Jesus. Thanks be to God who gives to us this wonderful good news. Amen. This time I ask Fred if he would lead us in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord, conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the one holy universal Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting.
will share with us in the closing blessing and benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. And of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Have a blessed, joyful week and see you Sunday. Hopefully, if not before. Take care. God bless.